There are many horror games on Roblox and a lot of them are... Uh... Yeah, you yeah, know. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at two relatively underrated Roblox horror games that are unfortunately hidden from the community for the most part. Condition 1 is a really cool Roblox horror game developed by ThinkBuild, a game where you play as a character named Asher who works as a weather researcher all the way in Antarctica. Everything and everybody was well off until the unfortunate event where a storm hit your station. This eventually led to a series of unexpected events where the storm no longer became the only threat at large. This game has got some unique puzzles as well, and when I say unique, I mean unique, because no other Roblox horror games have anything like this. Like the creators really put their thought into this game. The game also gives a cinematic feel and also very atmospheric. If you told me that you were in Antarctica while playing this, I won't believe you the fuck. But the vibe is there, that's all I can say. The game is divided into four different chapters, the first chapter being called Preparation. It is March 25th, 1971. You are at Brockton Station, Antarctica, 500 kilometers away from McMurdo Station. The game starts off with a conversation between you and another researcher who is revealed to go by the name Elena. Woman. Yes, I think I'm Asher. Well, what's all these numbers and... Okay. Pick up a reply. Yeah, here. What's up? Oh. Let's go. Great news, but I feel like there's something more you'd want to tell me. Sure, I mean, I'll do them now. Thanks, Ash. I'll see you in a bit. And then it begins, with your first two objectives being checking up on the satellite dish and fixing the service panel at Electrical. Phenomenal, this is already so cool. I'm actually excited to play this. I I'm gonna just go out. Oh my god. See map from memory. Satellite dish. Okay, electrical. The Among Us. And I'm so sorry. It's really like atmospheric. Like, um. It's like you're actually there. Kinda. There's a train coming by. And I don't think there's a train in Antarctica. I don't know, man, but this is so cool. Look. Look at the colors. I feel like I'm in a freaking vivo music video or something yeah you guys know those like lyric videos on youtube and there's like these pe pastel once you enter electrical you will stumble upon a puzzle that you have to solve this puzzle is solved by using your walkie talkie which will play out morse codes that you have to listen to decode and then input them into the system by pressing on the buttons dedicated to certain numbers i initially struggled with this in fact i had no idea what i had to do at first all right so what is this reminder decode the more uh, decode the morse code turn turn input to then oh then input then oh then input them in numerical n then <laughs> fucking dyslexic bro i'm not even dyslexic all right decode the morse then input them in numerical order right um i i, I don't I, I don't get it i don't get it. oh this is the morse code oh i'm so stupid oh okay one right that's the first one Okay, we're just gonna keep listening. That's one again. Well, what the f- That's five, I think. It's five again. Wait, I think that's three? Is that correct? Oh, that's the first one done. Ah! Huh? Four. F three. One. Four again. That should be it. That should be it. Yes. All right. I'm. I'm gonna calm down. I'm not freaking going through all three at like consecutively. Alright, I'm ready. I am ready. Alright, I'm done. I quit this. Two, one, one, five, three. That should be it. That should be it. I'm very certain it is. 
Let's go. Let's go. We fixed it. Shout out to my boy Bill Nye, the science guy. Yo, I'm too fat. There we go. Okay. This building is very fat phobic. After you're done with the first task of fixing the service panel, you have to trek through the snow to head to the satellite dish. I want food right now. The task there is pretty simple. Pick up the shovel and just clear the snow covering up the area. All right, pile of snow. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. It just went dark for a second. No problem. All right. That's a good question, actually. Mm. The echo. Dude, this is... Oh my god, this game is phenomenal. This game is phenomenal. After that, you return to your cabin. Can I just break into her cabin wait i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do i'm gonna do my own thing okay i don't even think I can. there's an invisible wall yeah i can't i can't do that dang it you put up an invisible wall N never mind never mind that, that was like black magic but um i'm so strong that i broke through the invisible wall so yeah to totally totally because of that okay so generic office house kind of mixture i don't know what is this? Paranormal shit. Elena then requests you to obtain weather data. Hey Ash, I'm back. Welcome back. Hey Elena. The guys from McMurdo Station say that there might be a storm forming southwest of us. I'd work on that right now, but I'm busy calibrating the weather station. Could you give info on the weather? See if it's heading toward us? Sure, I'll do that. All right, sit down. We're, it's time to work. The computer asks for your login code and the code is located to the right of your character. The code being 57279. Let me in. Let me in. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I hope you have a great day. What, what am I? I'm fucking tweaking. Welcome to Eagle Eye. Gather weather info. Getting data from satellite dish. Error, calibrate satellite dish first. Oh, okay. All right. That makes sense. Right. It should be clear because we uh, cleared up the snow. Testing motors. Everything should be doing fine. This computer sounds like it's about to explode. And for the following series of puzzles, you just have to do some mathematics, which I hate so much. Move the cross to the desired area in the graph. Squirt. Huh? I use the arrow keys for this. Oh, I can use my... I didn't know I could use my cursor. The cursor is really, like, small and it's barely visible, so I didn't know. So, Y is 1. And 4, uh, X is square root of 4, which is 2. Right? Wow. Albert Einstein Romeo. over here. Okay, Echo. so... Romeo. Echo. Yep. There we go. Alright, so X is minus... What the fuck? Some of the second and third decimal of a avocado? <laughs> huh? Okay, bro, what the fuck? That's that, right? Okay, some of the second and third decimal. So the second and third decimal, the second is the freaking two, two. Okay, that's four. Okay, so the four, the sixth decimal. Okay, the fourth one is five. Six is two. So two minus five. Minus three. <laughs> Okay, so everything was correct, but apparently it was meant to be a negative number. Or Brockton Station, weather for the next three days. Partly cloudy, snow, snow. Okay. Yeah, this storm's bringing up and heading towards our direction. But we have plenty of time to pack and prepare. Storm should arrive in about a week or so. I hope Alex arrives in time. Don't want him to be getting caught up in the storm. I'll be charging my walkie-talkie now, so I won't be able to talk to you. Oh, and thanks for the help. No problem. Yep, no problem. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, Ash. See you tomorrow. Alright, see you tomorrow. What's up tomorrow? What are we doing tomorrow?
You have now entered condition 3, the second chapter of the game. It is April 2nd, 1971. You're still at Brockton Station, Antarctica, and at this point the snowstorm is starting to surface and there is mild heavy snow in the area. Elena suddenly contacts you about a previously mentioned character who goes by the name of Alex. Where's the walkie talkie? Hello? Yeah, Elena, I'm here. Have you heard anything from Alex? He hasn't updated nor contacted me for a while. No, not really. He probably doesn't have a signal in the storm. Yeah, but that's probably it. He probably needs help but can't reach us. That's true. She has a point. What if he's stuck there? I can't doubt that. But how would we reach him if he doesn't have signal at all? Do you think you could contact Pink Myrtle Station? I want to know if Alex is staying there until the storm dies down. If not, he's out of his mind to just go out there in the storm. Why are you worrying so much? And why can't you do it? Besides, I already have something else to do. I'm a bit worried, you know? It's not really normal to not hear from a colleague. Also, my antenna snapped because of the wind. I am waiting for the storm to calm down so that I can repair it afterwards. Just be helpful, Asher. Don't be selfish. <sighs> Alright, I'll contact them. Thank you so much, Ash. No problem. Indeed, that was problem. After the conversation, your task is now to contact McMurdo Station regarding the whereabouts of Alex. However, amidst doing so, a power outage occurs. Crap, that scared me. I'll head on over to Electrical to see what's up. Yeah. Sure, I'll stay at my station and turn the generator on. Do you need any help? She died? Oh, so. never mind. <laughs> Dude, it sounds like war. Right, then I'll just gather info from the storm. While Elena travels to Electrical to solve the problem, you head out to the front to turn back on your generator. Dude, this guy's hands are not steady at all. Nervous? Probably. I'll sit in the timbers! Abinette, dress up. Getting ready to, uh head into the storm we got that uh lethal company employee point of view over here oh all right where's the generator is it this i right, turn that on all right that was a uh, pretty simple while gathering weather data the outage happens again Ah, oh, not again, dude. Great. Can't fix the wires. They seem to be ripped off of the power box. This is your idea. The wind's very harsh tonight, so I'm guessing that's the reason why. I think we need to go to the central station. Or else we'll freeze up here. I have a snow truck at the back of my base, so the wind won't knock us over. Alright, let's pack our things. So yeah, you need to meet up with Elena in order to head to the central station in order to avoid freezing yourselves. We can't sprint. So... This is gonna take a bit of time. Oh, yep, it snapped. Look at that. Looks like one of those like gas station floaty things. Oh, is that Elena? Yo, what's up, dude? What's good, G? What's good? What's going on? Did you see no. Yes. No. Yeah, I may have heard something actually. <laughs> Oh, this is so cool, though. April 2nd, 1971, heavy snow. How long do we have left until we reach the central station? Let's say about a minute. This is so cool. Are we able to be contact support at the station? Ask people for help with the repair. Upon arriving at the central station, the game immediately tells you to enter the building. Can I sprint? Nope, still can't sprint. It's, it's so dark. 
Dude, do you not carry flashlights with you, Elena? Do we just enter the back rooms? Hello? Okay, there's power here. That's good. Where's she going? Huh? All of a sudden, noises can be heard throughout the station. Your next objective is to then investigate the noise. Wait, wh where did she go? What? Uh, Elena? You set me up. This is a, this is a setup, isn't it? All right, hold space bar. Gotta investigate the noise. Dude, there's definitely something in here. Oh, I don't like that noise. As I get closer, it gets louder. Is that Alex? Who is that? Why are you here? Was that it? Hide. Oh shoot. You know, I can't figure that she would die. Deal. Alex. Elena was with me. She's gone. I didn't realize Ash. Crap. I'm sorry. Alex. Okay. Take a look at the windows. I'll plug off the doors. Okay, do you know- I, I- I did not see what we were facing though. I did not see what we're- we're facing. Um... So what's going on? Both Asher and Alex formulate a quick plan to block off all the entries in order to prevent the monster from getting through to them. After doing so, you meet Alex in the kitchen for another conversation. What's in here though? A Yeti or something? Oh, you're still gonna die. There are no working lines. But I found a note. Along with a compass, supplies and directions to a safe house. I think that's what that is. That's great, Alex. The stuff with I honestly have no idea, Asher. Well, have you read the note? No, Asher. I don't have the time. Especially since there's a monster, what? 15 yards away from us. <laughs> a monster? She's dead, 100%. Alex, listen to me. It's a condition three storm outside. The monster's gone along with traces of Elena. How, how could we possibly find her? <laughs> Let alone survive outside. Come on, let's just get somewhere safe. Okay, grab anything you can find for self-defense. Asher and Alex then plan to escape the central station in the middle of the heavy snowstorm, but that may have just been cut short. What? Huh? What happened? Condition one. Oh, that was it! Fuck! So this next game is suggested by a fellow viewer, Katsificator, hopefully I pronounced your name right. Thank you for the suggestions, by the way, I really appreciate it. Toshiko Tokyo Undying is a horror game developed by Raven Light Studios. In the description is a brief summary of the game's premise, a first-person survival horror game about surviving a virus discovered outside of Tokyo that threatens all life. Just like Condition 1, this game feels very cinematic and very atmospheric. The environment is absolutely stunning. The map design in general has to be my favorite part about this game. And also, there are also some pretty good horror elements. However, so far, 
far, since it's a demo just like the previous game, the game at the moment is pretty short, but it is still great in the state that it is now. The game starts off with some sort of cutscene, a news report regarding an epidemic in Tokyo. In recent news, Harihama, a local village outside of Tokyo, has recently became the home to a new virus strain. The Prime Minister has urged all residents to stay indoors during the epidemic. The virus has shown to have a fatality rate of 72% and those who survive have suffered from severe long-lasting psychological effects. The NIID has declared this virus unsafe and a potential threat to life in Tokyo as we know it. You're gonna have to do some, uh quarantining soon. My father lives nearby Harihama, I should go check on him. Right after okay. the opening news report, the player takes full control and is presented with the first task of heading to a payphone and calling for a taxi. I'm at a payphone. Can I go this way? What's over here? Nope. Invisible wall. Some black magic shit again. Hop over the fence, get never mind. This fence won't budge. Alright, time to hop over, do parkour. I guess we'll have to go this way instead. The map design is really impressive. I really like this. Like, it's really pleasing to the eye. This one's locked. Okay. This one's also locked. Push. Alright, we have trespassed, um, intruded, uh, private property. But that's okay, because... That is what the game wants us to do. Okay, what is this? Why is this suddenly turned on by itself? I can't even interact with it, but okay. Take ladder. All right, All right we're going to climb over. Grab a key. What's the key doing up there? Okay, unlock that fence. There we go. What's this? I am going through. A, I am phasing through the bin. Oh, switch. Alright, we've activated the gate, I'm assuming. Yep, alright, let's go. What's in here? Birds! Bird. I really like these, like, types of maps in, like, Roblox horror games. They're really cool. Oh! Once you arrive at the payphone, you must interact with the phone to call for a taxi. No problem, guys. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. This sends you into a cutscene, and the game truly begins from there. Or like after the cutscene, after this interaction with the payphone. Our character is not even there. Wait, who entered the taxi? There was nobody standing there. Toshiko, Tokyo Undying. Oh. So it turns out the taxi crashed as a result of the lightning strike on a tree nearby. They just got bamboozled by the storm. Your character wakes up but cannot get up as you are somewhat crushed by a tree and you are now forced into a situation where you have to try your best to push the tree off of you. Push tree again. So it's, it's a tree branch, right? Surely you don't have an entire tree on top of you. That, that would be a bit concerning, not gonna lie. Well, this whole situation is concerning in itself, so... Am I out? I'm out. And you end up doing it just fine. It's so dark. Holy crap. I can't run. Legs are injured. 100%. How's the driver doing? Oh, whatever. Bro's probably dead. As you can see, it's extremely dark and you're forced to walk through the forest in this darkness all alone. And this is made worse when you hear a loud scream echo throughout the area. Might want to pick up the pace, buddy. <laughs> Luckily, to save you from a potential heart attack, there is a flashlight nearby for you to pick up. Though the risk of the heart attack is not mitigated exponentially. <laughs> this is so cool, though. Look at the nature. Okay, can't really see because my guy's blinking nonstop. I mean, bro is like, uh, tripping right now. I'm a bit less tired now. I should be able to run. Oh, he was just tired, right? Are you not injured at all? Surely you sustained some injuries. After walking for a bit, you encounter a gate key hidden in some sort of broken down vehicle. This will be helpful in a bit. Gate key. Walking for a bit more leads you to what should be a relatively populated urban area. But instead, it seems to be rather lifeless. No signs of anyone at all. Notes are also scattered throughout the place, so keep an eye out for those to keep up with the lore. Oh, there's a note. Mr. Ari... Ari... <sighs> Fuck. 
Gosh. I was hoping it wouldn't come to this, but I must resign from my position. I cannot keep working under these current conditions. I regretfully must take leave from our partnership. I understand this will put you in a tough position, but my family has fallen sick. I'm sure you've heard word about the virus making its way through our town. Well, I can assure you the rumor was true. We are no longer safe here in Harihama. The locals have gone mad. With the main roads shut down, we've not received any shipments in weeks, and supplies have began dwindling. There's been a lot of violence during the night hours, and I must stay home with my family and assure their safety. I'm sure you understand, as it is a father's job to protect his family. Must ask you to do the same. Forget about the farm. Get out of here and keep your loved ones safe. This virus is no joke. Yes, Sonoda Takumi's residence has been giving off a foul stench. I haven't seen him leave his home in a week. Maybe you could check on him? Well, for a check, bro is probably dead, by the way. Just saying. Wait, let's, let's uh, explore the area a little bit. Okay. So we're gonna need to find some sort of fuse to power the generator. Okay, gonna need something to pry the barricade open. Alright, so let's go check that one area first real quick. Okay, we can definitely use a crowbar to uh, pry the barricade open. Alright, remove wood. Open the door. Hello? Alright, what does this note say? Three nights ago, I heard the local villagers attacking my animals. I don't know what to do anymore. I've tried calling the police department from Nishinapuri, but they've yet to send anyone. These people have turned into savages, from attacking one another to raiding any food stash around. They've lost all sense of humanity. I've been living here in these parts for decades, and I've never seen an epidemic hit quite like this. The virus seems to be spreading rampant, with a fatality rate of 51% thus far. Local news stations have called wind and broadcasted. Hopefully it falls on the right ears and vaccines developed. I've seen them burning bodies. Something tells me we've gotten off the deep end. I don't know who will find this note, but if you happen to be looking for me, I've already left. I'm returning home to Kyoto to reside with my son. Yep, that's a fair, you know, he listened to the other dude's uh, advice. I forgot, forgot the name. <laughs> While exploring the house, footsteps can suddenly be heard coming from outside, accompanied by the sounds of a chainsaw. Oh shoot, wait. That sounds like a chainsaw. Oh. Fuck. Fuck. What the heck? Dude, what the heck? Wait, what do I do? Wait. There's someone with a chainsaw out there. Hey, bro, did that? Bro, did that? <laughs> Alright, we gotta be vigilant. Be careful. What is going on at this place? Did that radio just turn on? Oh, sh shit. They're just out here killing everyone. Hey, let me out, bro. Start that thing. Start that thing. Come on. There we go. Alright. Get my ass out of here, dude. I ain't getting shot today. Nah. -uh. Hope I don't get chased down by some chainsaw dude, though. Or like some dude with a rifle or a shotgun. Crash scene. Okay. Car's invisible, by the way. Uh. Okay, fence is locked. Bamboo trees. Are there pandas around here? Surely the, the Kung Fu Panda is out here defeating these savage dudes, right? Uh, Kung Fu Panda 5. Uh, the infected city in Tokyo. Or something. I don't know. Yo, who's crying? Who's crying? The constipation that bad? Oh wait, someone's locked in here. Do I let them out? Whoa! Shut the hell up, bro! You dead! Stay dead! How'd you open the door, by the way? There's something swimming in the freaking river. Godzilla. Wrong universe. Upon reaching this area, the demo is basically done, unfortunately, so you are free to leave. 